What's going on YouTube? Fuzzy Wuzzy playing with this here Super Duty. Taking all the power windows and shit out of it for my Super Duty up there. I tried. This this thing has already been hacked up. There's a bunch of cut wires and there's there's cut shit everywhere from when it was used as a parts truck for the motor and all that shit. I tried hooking it up, giving it power. Uh, all it does is buzz on the inside. The windows don't work. Nothing works on the inside. <coughs> so I'm having to kind of jump it. I've already got that side all apart. The regulator out. All that shit out. So let's, let's pull this side. Let's pull this regulator out and all that shit. Too far. That's it. <coughs> You're just trying to get... There's two nuts right here. You gotta get off to release the window. There's one nut in there, one stud right there. What you gotta try to do is pull the pull the track off them studs. There you go. This is pretty easy stuff getting this regulator and shit out. I'm not going to go into uh, too much detail because I'm sure A1 Auto or somebody has a video on how to do this. Ta da! Now let's, let's rip out this here grommet. Grommet. I have a buddy that says groom it. How fucking, how weird is that shit? He's probably watching this too. He knows who he is. All right. Done with the door. Going on YouTube. So I had a little change of plans. I started pulling the whole dashboard out of this truck. And I got, I got a lot of it out. Then I was like, you know what, I ain't, I ain't doing this shit because I got to do the same thing to that one, and I don't, I don't really want to do all that. So what I did was all the harness there, the door harness and everything, shit. That whole harness there that went to the door, that went through the door. I just pulled the bit out of it that has the power window there's the switch end there's the window motor end it came through you know the hole and then it ran ran down this way there was a plug right here then it ran down this way and it went over there and it went that way so i just cut it i think i might have fucked up because i bet that it's going over there to tie in to the driver's side oh well i can fix it but in the end, all you're left with from the switch end is three wires that go somewhere else. Man, that makes it a lot easier. These are the only wires I'm putting in the passenger side. Got a whole lot less intimidating and complicated only dealing with three wires. I've already got the old regulator out. New one just dropped in no problem same bolts same everything couldn't be any easier all i'm gonna do is you don't have enough light but this factory grommet here i'm just gonna poke a hole in it 
and feed these three wires feed these three wires through and then I'll be done with this side I'm probably gonna have to use the door panel that came with that truck hopefully it fits just wanted to give you a look see before I put the door panel on I taped the Christmas tree things back on that's all good I was able to fish it through there now I just got it hanging out hanging out for now speakers in that's plugged in I'm gonna pop this door panel on I just wanted you to see well YouTube progress got this motor in got the panel on got the wires ran through this side sucks a little more because the parking brake and shit but you could you could fish it through without taking it out it just it sucks anyway I got this all plugged in and I got it wired up temporarily so we got these four wires here the four wires in the back of this connector we know where these go because of the same colors of the wires that go down to the motor the only ones we don't know are this blue with a black stripe and the solid black well it's I think it's a pretty safe bet that solid black is the ground because I I'm pretty sure it is because I, I unscrewed it from the body on that truck it had a, a bolt right down here where it's grounded so I know where that goes that leaves this wire the blue with the black stripe that's got to be power and in that truck it's it runs up in here and then it splits off into some harness so I just cut it off that left it too short so I soldered on in here somewhere it's got a soldered connection with shrink tubing this that's this wire so this yellow wire is now that blue wire and over there on the passenger side I just got these wires that are supposed to run over there I got those twisted on the ends and of course that blue one wasn't long enough so that is now represented this pink by this pink wire a little confusing but just think of it as these two are the same blue wire that's right here in the back of the panel so let's hook power to this guy and see what happens now I got power going to the blue and black wire and I got the ground on the black one let's give her some amperage ah lucky there I think if you even tap it Ah. Okay, that's something to keep in mind. It goes up, but when you tap it, the auto window works. It just doesn't turn off. That is definitely something to keep in mind. But this side works. I wish I could disable that feature, so when somebody borrows the truck, they don't accidentally... You know leave it on I'm gonna have to look into that let's try this button <laughs> Ta -da. it's pretty easy all right cool so now we know that it works I'm gonna put all this shit where it belongs I now I just gotta clean up the wiring run that wire properly under the dash somewhere and somehow I'm not gonna run it all the way back around here like they had it in the parts truck I'm just gonna run it under the dash zip tie it up somewhere because whatever it works this black wire I bet that's a mighty nice looking ground right there clean it up so the only thing I gotta find is a, a switched 12 volt source and I'm gonna do some poking around in the fuse box maybe even the one under the hood to find something that can handle at least 10 amps I really don't want to piggyback off of another circuit I mean I will because I can but I don't want to so I'm gonna clean all this shit up and I'll bring you back when I'm done all right YouTube she's done here's what I did I got the wires ran over everything soldered together I used that plug for ease of maintenance later 
So if I ever got to do a heater core or some stupid shit where I got to pull the dash apart, I don't have to cut the wires. I could just pull it apart and then move them aside. Where I got that plug from was the blower motor. It was thick enough gauge wire for me to use, so I used it. Where I got power from is right there. Underneath this cover here. I don't know what's supposed to be there. Some option my truck doesn't have. And that's a keyed 12 volt source. It has a 30 amp fuse on it. An inline fuse right there. This has been tapped for about five years now. This is where I get power to run the, uh, the lights for my plow there. So I just tapped into that. I'm sure it's not proper way, but what are you gonna do? That's the way I'm doing it. If I burn my truck down, it's my truck. I'll do it if I want to. According to the owner's manual, it's supposed to be right there or there. I don't remember. The factory fuse for it would have been a 30 amper. <clears throat> and it does have a pin out for it. There's pins in there, but it's hot all the time. Because I'm sure it would have ran into the by the control module or some stupid shit. You know, whatever. Key on. Truck's running. I got windows. How do you like that? So, a quick recap. If I had to do this all again, look at how much I tore out of this truck. Just because I wanted to trace the wires back. If I had to do it all again, if I was going to the junkyard to get these parts, it could be done in like an hour. Because I know where the wires go. It's a real simple circuit. I had to just cut the shit out and ran my own wires. You don't got to do all this if you're putting doing this shit yourself. Alright, thanks for watching YouTube. Peace.